In this edit video, I'm going to be showing you how I took this raw image and turned it into this finished shot. So we'll dive first into Lightroom and take a look at this raw shot. Now this is an image that I took on a recent road trip around Scotland for a feature that I was shooting for CNET magazine. That's an awesome piece. I'm really excited for it to come out. Um, I don't have the actual magazine in my hands yet, but this was a great road trip taking the Porsche Cayenne around a lot of the North Coast 500 road trip in Scotland and photographing it in these dramatic conditions. Now I knew I wanted to add some motion to this shot when I took it, so I made sure that I framed this in a way that would lend itself well to that sort of edit. There's plenty of foreground interest, you see the road and the bridge sweeping away into the distance, all of which is great for adding some of that motion. But first of all, let's go over into Photoshop and we'll take a look at what I did to create this shot. So here we are. Now, the first thing I did was to clean the image. We can see there's a lot of problems in this shot. There's this weird line going across the bridge. The car is filthy, and there's a lot that we can do to help that. So if I turn this layer on, we can see that the car looks a lot cleaner. The road is a lot cleaner. We've got a much nicer base image to start editing from. Now, in doing the cleanup, I mostly use the clone stamp tool in selecting one area of the car and then basically painting that in somewhere else. And I also use over here the patch tool and the spot healing brush tool to get rid of a lot of these specks of dirt. Now when you're doing a car shoot normally I would always advise you have the car to be as clean as possible. If you can run the car through a car wash and then go and do the shoot then perfect. I was on location and this was many many miles into this road trip and unfortunately uh, the car just wasn't all that clean. There was very little we could do about it. I didn't have clean supplies with me and there wasn't anywhere I could take it to give it a quick wash. So unfortunately the car was very very dirty. If I turn that layer off you can see all around here all this dirt, this grime, these lines where the speed has dragged dirt across the car. It is absolutely filthy. Uh, my cleaner player has done a lot to correct that. It's far from perfect, but it's as close as I think I'm going to be able to get it. Um, and it's as close as I think it really needs to be. It doesn't need to be absolutely shining. It just needs to be better than it was. So my next few layers are the actual blurs. I'm going to come back to those a little bit later because I, I tend to apply my blur on these images after I've done most of the actual edit. Uh, but what I will show you, still on cleaning the car a little bit, is this blue colour fill doors. Now basically what I've done is create a new layer and using the brush tool and the eyedropper tool I've selected a colour that exists on the car and I've just painted in on top of the car over the, where those grey tones are. But by using a blending mode of colour, it's basically changed the colour of that grey into the blue that I want and it just helps those uh, body panels look a little bit more natural. If we just take a look at that uh, blue by itself, that is all that you actually see. That is all I've done is very, very faint outline of, of colour, but it actually does make a big difference if we just turn on and off particularly around here, you can see that it really brings that colour back away from being this smingy grey. So moving further up, uh, I wanted to desaturate the road around the car, uh, which I've done just by using a saturation adjustment. I brought that down and then I have masked away where I don't want that to appear. But it just helps uh, clean out some of those orange and magenta hues on the road and it draws the eye a little bit more to the bold cyan blue of the car. Uh, now the next things I've done were global adjustments. If we take a look in this uh, folder, we turn this on, we can see now we're starting to get some dramatic edits. We see the colour tones have changed, the contrast has changed, the exposure has changed. So if I go through and just turn these off as we go down, I can take you through what I've done. So the first one is a hue and saturation. This is very, very subtle. You'll see this mostly in the shadows around these clouds area here. Um, it's just taking those deep purples into more of a bluey cyan sort of tone. Uh, and then I brought the vibrance down just a little bit. Now I usually find with these dramatic moody shots, particularly somewhere like Scotland where there's a big stormy sky overhead, that bringing down the vibrance or the saturation, or ideally a little bit of both, um, can really lend a scene this um, additional mood, this cinematic sort of feel to it, which I think always looks really good. Um, 
Next thing up, I've used a photo filter. This one is cyan, but you can see that I brought the, the density down to only 18% because I don't want a huge cyan tone like this. That would look ridiculous. I just want to bring a bit of that color into the clouds um, and into the sky. And you can see, I just think that gives it a nice additional look. Uh, next up is I've added a LUT. Uh, now a LUT, it's, called a, it's actually called a lookup table. Uh, I've used the, one of the Fuji ones that comes as standard in Photoshop. But again, I've made sure that I use it only, I think sensitively, let's say, because if we have this at max, you can see this is very dark and dingy and contrasty. I don't want that, but I do like a subtle look. Um, so if we take that from naught and then just slowly bring it back up to 25%, I think that gives it a nice overall look. Downside is that it is a little bit too dark, so my next one was just brightening up a little bit, and then I brought down the contrast finally. So those are my global adjustments. I also added some graduated adjustments to the sky, mostly in contrast, uh, just to help boost uh, that cloud texture a little bit, uh, levels and brightness and contrast, which I just, again, masked out where I don't want those uh, to be. So it's not applying if we for example, disable this layer mask, you can see that suddenly those levels is applying to everything in this scene and it looks horrible. Uh, I don't want it to apply everywhere in the scene, I just want it on the sky. So that's what we did. So we can close that. Uh, now I think it was at this point that I started to actually add the blur and bring some motion into this. So to get this blur motion, I used it here, filter, blur gallery, and I used path blur for the road and spin blur for the wheels. Uh, now the first one I'll turn on actually is road blur main. And we can see this is the one that brings in a lot of this road motion, this uh, sense of speed that you can get. It's also given me this blotchiness. I'm not entirely sure what I've done here, but that does get cleaned up a little bit later. Um, if we have a look at this uh, layer by itself, we can see that what I've done is selected the road and the bridge um, and then put that on a new layer. Uh, and that means that I can apply the blur just to the road. It's not applying to the mountains. It's not applying to the sky. Basically not applying anywhere where there, where there wouldn't be a blur. Because, um, of course, relatively, the sky is much further away. So that wouldn't have any motion blur, nor would the mountains, because they are very much in the distance. But what I did, what I forgot to really uh, point out before I started work on doing the blur, is I cut the car out of the scene using the pen tool. Uh, so if we just have a look and say load that selection back in, car cut out, there we go. Uh, that is a cutout that I created, again, as I say, with the pen tool. Now what that means is that I can completely isolate the car from the background. So when I apply a blur to the background, I can make sure that the car isn't affected by the blur at all. I can control exactly how the car looks independently from the background. That is so important in doing an edit like this. So I'll get rid of that. Uh, so I like this. I liked my first road blur. As you can see, it really does change the scene dramatically. But I did want to bring in a bit more of a sense of motion. So I've doubled down and I've added an additional layer of speed over the top. But crucially, the second one if we have a look at just that layer, is really only applying very much at the bottom, which would be the area closest to the camera and therefore would have a bigger sense of blur because it is relatively traveling much faster. Uh, therefore, apply more blur. It, should, it, it makes sense. I promise it makes sense. So that's what I did then. And then, of course, we've got the wheels rear wheel blur and then front wheel blur and now with all those blur layers activated you can see that already this car has got this proper sense of motion like you would look at this and genuinely think this car is speeding along the bridge actually of course i was standing still because it's a busy road and i didn't have a camera rig i didn't have a crew car any of the things where i'd usually use to get this sort of shot so i'm having to fake this uh to an extent but I think it's coming on pretty well. So, next up, uh, again, using the uh, the pen tool cutout, I was able to apply some contrast specifically to the car, which I think just helps it pop out a little bit. Uh, I've also applied some levels there. I've also used, then used a bright, brightness and contrast adjustment to brighten up the wheels a little bit. They were falling into shadow, and of course, those are some cool wheels, so you just want those to pop out a little bit more. 
Now, from this point, I was mostly doing color toning, and I do a lot of my toning in Lightroom, and you can do that in Photoshop using the Camera Raw filter. But in order to do that, you do need to do that on an entirely new layer. So from this point on, I merged all of the lower layers into one new layer on top and started applying the Camera Raw filter. So let's take a look at this first one. And we can see this is quite a dramatic change. We turn this on and off, we can see what's happened, I've taken a little bit of cyan out of the sky um, and have rode a little bit, and I think it just helps this look a lot more cinematic. This one, again, added a little bit more blue tone in there. So with all the toning, this now gets to the point where there is no real right or wrong way to do this edit. This is very much subjective, very much down to what you want to do with your own photos. And so from this is really just following what I wanted to achieve. This isn't the correct way to do an edit. I mean, I think it's really great fun to play around with these edits and try a few different things, uh, which I did with this, and what I'm showing you now is pretty much what I settled on in the end. So I've got those two um, camera raw filters in there. The next thing I did is add a dodge and burn layer, and if we turn this on and off, pay attention particularly to the car and around some of the front details. I'll zoom in just a touch here, because this really just helps those highlights on the car pop out a little bit. So if we see this on and off, we can see that it does just help those details pop out on the car. Uh, notice as well in the mountains, um, when I've added this in, it just helps out bring out some of those details in the rocks in the background. Just helps make those mountains stand out a little bit more because this shot was quite dark evidently and those mountains do just sort of fall into greyness in the background and I want them to actually stand out and be actually part of the scene. That's my dodge and burn layer. Next up, I did a little bit of denoise on the car because, again, it was quite gritty, and so I've just tried to smooth out some of these panels. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference, but it does just bring away some of that detail, which um, I just think helps make it look a little bit cleaner and a little bit more of a polished shot. Uh, I did another camera raw filter, but this time specifically to the background, again just to help bring out more of a cinematic feel in the shot, and by using that cutout I was able to not apply that to the car. Uh, and then I've done a little brightening layer, and then finally, not quite finally, uh, I used the colour balance to add a little bit of blues into the scene as well, and then a bit more of a saturation boost on the car to help it pop out. So those are all the layers. When they're all turned on, you can see the finished shot. I'm really pleased with how this has come out. It's probably taken me about five hours of work. I'm sure a more talented Photoshopper would be able to do this in half the time and to an even better standard. Um, I'm not trying to pretend that I am a master Photoshopper. Far from it. Uh, I am slow and I probably don't get the best results I could do. There's probably people watching this screaming at the screen that I'm doing things wrong, but hey-ho, I am pleased with the finished shot and that is all that matters. Um, I think this is great. I'm really pleased with how this has come out from being a very flat, lifeless, standard image. Um, and then suddenly we've got something that's a lot more cinematic and hopefully this is gonna look really, really great as a double page spread in the magazine. Hopefully that's been helpful to have a bit of insight into how I do some of my edits. If you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button and also please make sure to subscribe if you don't already. That would be a big help as would telling a few of your friends, particularly if you've enjoyed this video and you want to tell them something nice about me. Uh, if you really hated it and you hate me, then maybe don't tell anyone. That's fine too. Uh, but that's it for now and I will see you next time.